I increased my SEO traffic in less than 30 days by 10,000 visitors per month, which is 50% using ChatGPT. So you can see the traffic on this site. This is my test website for running AI content since the beginning of March. It's gone from around 20,000 visitors per month to over 30,000. And in this video, I'll reveal my whole system for doing it so that you can achieve the same results. You'll learn how to train ChatGPT to audit your content and tailor it exactly how Google wants. You'll discover my system for quickly optimizing content. And you could even just give this whole system to a VA as free training so that they can do the whole thing for you. So basically right now we have the cheat codes for SEO. It's getting too easy. So let me show you how. So the first thing that you need to do is find a list of keywords that you can easily rank for with AI content. So the way that you're going to do that is if you go to your dashboard on ahrefs.com or you can use whatever website you use to find keywords. If you go down to organic keywords for the whole of Qro.com and then you type in your keyword, which is the main topic you're trying to rank for. For example, if I have a website about birds, then I type that in, click show results. And from here, once it loads, it's going to filter down a bunch of easy keywords that I can actually rank for. And if we filter that down even more, down to KD 10 or less, it's going to be even easier. Now you might be thinking, why am I looking through Kiora for keywords? Kiora is one of the easiest websites to beat. And typically its content is very shallow. So for example, if we look at this particular keyword and we find Kiora, and we actually look at the content they've produced, it's just a bunch of random answers that you could easily be if you wrote a well-written, well-structured article, right? So this is a great place to find keywords. And if you're going to produce mass amounts of content with AI, then you want to find low competition keywords. So for example, like how do birds lay eggs, right? 1,400 volume, KD10 is pretty easy to be. Cure is ranking on the first page for that keyword. It's just going to be an easy one to pick. And then you just go through the list and you find the relevant ones like our birds mammals, right? And then what we're gonna do is create an article. So if we go to ChatGPT, I'm gonna use a prompt here that I actually found from an amazing YouTube channel called Income Stream Surfers. If you're into AI, you've probably already seen it, but we can use the same prompt here. So if we go to, I've got a text expander canned response here. So if we use the prompt that they've recommended, and you can insert your anchor, your internal links if you want like this. We're not going to do it on this particular instance. Put your keyword like that. And then we're going to say, talk about relevant topics that we can actually rank for. What you want to do is you basically want to find headers that you could write about for your article, right? So you can install a plugin like this. Grab the headers like that and just put them into a Google Doc so we can assemble a sort of blog outline based on our competitors that are already ranking. So we'll edit it a little bit. And then we'll just find a bunch of headers that we can include in the article to guide ChatGPT on what we can write about. All right, so we've got a bunch of headers that we can tell ChatGPT to talk about. So we insert those here. We say write from an analytical perspective. Don't create a conclusion because usually it's pretty crap. You can insert internal links if you want. I won't do it for now. And you can also add FAQs. I won't do that for now. And then just hit enter. And this prompt will basically write a nicely formatted article for you. So you can see here, you've got your H2 tags, you've got your H3 tags based on what we programmed and guided chat GPT to do. So now we're going to go on to our website and start thinking about publishing it, right? So we're going to start click new, click post. And whilst ChatGPT writes, we can start setting up the article. So the keyword, the keyword is birds mammals. So we copy and paste that into our Yoast plugin. If you don't already have Yoast installed on WordPress, I would recommend it. It's pretty basic, but it's good for setting up the titles and the meta descriptions and that sort of thing. And now that is done. Sometimes ChatGPT ignores your instructions, like I told it not to include a conclusion, but it still did. And then we'll paste that into an article like this. Now, I actually have a checklist that I use for creating articles. So for this particular article, we're just going to go through the checklist as well. Because if we have a checklist, we don't forget anything, and it's just easier to optimize that way. 
So we'll put in the table of contents there. We'll separate it just so it looks nicely formatted. And as you can see, actually, one thing that's really annoying about ChatGPT is it writes huge blocks of text, right? They're like walls of text. So ideally, from a usability perspective, you don't want big walls of text when you're creating articles. So what you do instead is, and I got this from someone on LinkedIn, you can paste this in to an AI formatting script, right? So you can create a script with ChatGPT that basically puts every sentence onto a new line, which means it's much easier to read that content. So we're gonna take all of this content here, paste it in that, and then we're gonna run the script. By the way, if you want a link to this, if you just want to use my script, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do it. I'll give you a link. So we're going to click run. That'll format the content nicely. Obviously, it's still a little bit messy. Like you get these full sentences in one line, but that's okay. We can easily fix that. No problem. We're just going to go through the text, fix it up, make it look nice before we paste it in. And that'll get rid of the big walls of text that will basically make people pogo stick off your website if you're not careful. So we paste that back in. There we go, bing bang bosh. Everything's a bit nicely formatted. Get rid of the bold text. And we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. Now one thing I like to do as well when I'm creating an article is just run the stopwatch because I wanna time how long it takes to create an article. And that way I can improve the time every time I create one. And that way, if I've got a VA working for me, I know exactly how long this task should take them and I can pay them based on a fixed price. I can say normally it takes me 45 minutes to create an article like this. I'm gonna estimate that it takes you an hour, therefore I'll pay you whatever your hourly rate is, but on a fixed price so that you don't go over the time. And that way you're just a lot more efficient. Now, what else do we need to do here? Next up on the list, and we've got a, this article is just 500 words so far. So we need some more headers ideally as well, right? So we're gonna take some more headers from our competitors, just to make the article a bit longer. So we'll go through some more competitors here. Steal the headings based on what's already ranking because Google already tells us what sort of content it likes and what topics it likes us to talk about. And then we're just gonna take anything relevant from these pages. Like for example that. And then you can go on to ChatGPT again and say add these headings to clean up a little bit and it will start writing the content. Now whilst it's writing the content, we're gonna go through and find some more headers that we can use just to make our content even more comprehensive because you want it to be the best piece of content out there. And that's the thing most people don't realize yet is that Google has come out and said, AI content is fine. It's gonna rank AI content and you're not gonna get penalized for it. Now at the same time, whether you're using AI content or not, there's not an excuse to let your content quality drop. And therefore that's why you have to make sure your content is the best it can possibly be. But this gives you an idea, right? I'm gonna close that annoying pop-up. That's another header to include. And now chat GPT should be done with the existing content. There we go, bing bang bosh. And we are going to take this content too. So we'll scroll down, paste it in, and we're good to go. And you can see in just like three minutes, based on the stopwatch here, we've already got a thousand relevant words. And we can just keep going. So we can paste this in as well, the extra headers we've found. That's been done. We're pretty much ready to go now. One thing I like to do as well is just add some FAQs from Google. So for example, like people also ask, we can use those as FAQs. And I have another prompt for that, which I'll show you in a sec. And we'll just wait for that to be done soon. Now, whilst that's getting done, we can go back to our checklist and we need to start adding some images as well. So what we can do for the content is you could use Bing. You could actually use Bing to create the images. So Bing has this AI content creator for images. And basically, if you put our birds mammals, it will take a couple of minutes, but it will actually generate the content for you. Same if you go to Unsplash, you can get license-free content there, copyright-free images. 
and you can just insert some images like that. So you can easily add your images. These are not particularly good images. I think it's because the topic is just too abstract for Bing. So we're going to X off there and we'll just use the images here instead. What might be good for Bing is actually if we use animals versus mammals. We'll wait for that to load and in the meantime, we'll go back to ChatGPT, get the content we created before. And there we go, we'll paste it back in there. Now, we've also got some FAQs to add, so we'll tell ChatGPT. And it's sometimes it's a little bit deviant, ChatGPT, it doesn't listen to your instructions. So here's what we're gonna do instead. We'll go to ChatGPT and use our FAQs. So this is a prompt that I created previously, and you can see here, here it is. So we just get the FAQs done as H3s, and then we paste them into our site like this. Okay, so if we go back to Bing, we've now got the images examples, so we can just download those. As you can see, it's like a mammals versus animals picture. And we're going to slap that in the middle of blocks of text, just to break it up a little bit. There we go. Make it look a little bit nicer. All right. Now we go back to ChatGPT. We've got the FAQs. All right. So another thing that I like to do with ChatGPT on the checklist is once we've added in the images and the table of contents, etc., is to add some tables in there. Right, because tables make your content just a little bit more interesting, spices it up a little bit. So what we can do is we can say, right, chat GPT, make a table about what makes a bird and keep the info short. Now what it's gonna do is create a markup table that we can just paste into our content. And that makes our content a bit more engaging. So we paste it in just over here. And we could do that throughout our content. So we can say create a table about how birds are different from mammals. And then it would just give us a nice little comparison table that would normally take you about an hour if you were researching this yourself. So we can base that in like this. We also need to add in some internal and external links to the content, which we'll do now. And we can just go through the content, add in some internal links, clean up the rest of the content as well. And as we scroll through, let's take a look. We can find some relevant sources to link to as well. Like this one, paste that in there. So we've got some outbound links too. Probably Yoast score is going up nicely now. We need to get a meta description. Easy to do that with ChatGPT again. So you use this custom prompt that I've got. And then you front load the keywords. So you say create a 20 word meta description and front load the keyword, whatever your keyword is. In this example, it is birds, mammals. So we'll take that and we'll paste it into the meta description. And then we need some title ideas as well. So we'll say to ChatGPT, give me 10 blog ideas on our birds and mammals. So you have our meta title loaded, keyword typed in, slug ready to go, meta description the good. Probably overuse the keyword a little bit too much on the density. We've not included the keyword in our introduction. So we say, are you wondering whether it's mammals? And then we need to reduce the keyword density a little bit. So we can delete that from the relevant places. Just go through the content and see where we can improve it. We'll split up some more of the text as well. So we'll split up some of the text as well, make sure it's not in big blocks before we publish it. And it's looking pretty good now. All right. 1,700 words, and then we'll hit publish like this, and then we can index it as well, request indexing like that. And you can see in 15 minutes, we've got a nicely written article on our target keyword, and it's gonna be super easy to rank it. Now, another thing that we can do is we can actually grade the content using ChatGPT. This is a trick I found from Matt Diggity, who does some amazing videos as well. We can say to ChatGPT, right, summarize the most important criteria 
from your helpful content guidelines. Now, if you're not familiar with the helpful content guidelines from Google, you can check them out. But basically it tells you exactly what it's looking for when it comes to ranking your content on Google, which means that you can train ChatGPT to follow those guidelines when you create content. So as you can see, it summarizes the top five criteria there. And then what we can say to ChatGPT is evaluate my content based on that criteria. And then you paste in your content. And here you can see I got an eight out of 10, which is pretty decent. It does say that I can improve it. For example, by reducing the repetition and improving the sentence structure. But overall, eight out of 10, 80% is pretty good. And considering this is such a low competition keyword, it's gonna be very easy to rank that. So we've added the tables in, we've graded the content. We can ignore that because this is just for review articles. We can improve the O score, but I'll come back to that later. And the content is around 2000 words, which is higher than most of our competitors. If we actually check out the keyword on Ahrefs, so we can see how long most of our competitors content is. So as you scroll down, this competitor might be beating us, but let's see. The only problem with Ahrefs word count is it's not that accurate. So if we actually measure the length of the content here, you can see they've only written 850 words, which is way less than us. So our content is more comprehensive, more detailed, includes more tables, more, more interesting facts. So overall, we've created a much better article and we've graded it based on Google's helpful content guidelines. So it's pretty much good to go now. We've created a great article, should rank pretty quickly, and that's how you do it. You just rinse and repeat that process over and over again. And if you give this video to a VA, let's say you're paying them between three to $5 an hour, they can just rinse and repeat this process all day long. And if it only takes you 17 minutes to create one article, then you can just scale this up and you can get someone to work for say eight hours a day, rinse and repeat this process, publish maybe 10 to 20 different articles per day that are targeting low competition keywords, that are really comprehensive articles. And all of a sudden, your rankings are gonna go up like crazy. So thanks so much for watching. If you want more videos on ChatGPT and creating SEO content, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you again soon.